Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. MTG Box Analysis here to open up our fourth and final Commander Masters Collector Booster Box. So we are going to do a full comparative analysis of all four of the Collector Booster Boxes that came from this particular case at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned to that. But before that, we got to crack this one open and see what kind of value we find inside. So I'd say I'd have uh, I've had pretty good luck with these uh, these Commander Master boxes. They none of them have been complete duds. Um, I think one of them was so so, but the other two have been really good. So let's crack open these four packs and see if we can't keep the uh, momentum going. That's assuming we can get them open. That might have been the hardest pack I've ever opened. All right, so this one kicks off with a generous gift, followed by a looter Ilkor with a Phyrexian Gargantua. Then we're going to see a Crash of the Rhino Beetles, followed by a Sandstone Oracle, Ariel Knight of Windgrace. Then we're going to see ourselves a Retro Swamp with a Commander Sphere in Borderless, followed by a Kadama's Reach. Then we're going to see Slimefoot the Stowaway in Foil Borderless with a Savage Beating coming in as our Mythic from the main set. Very nice. Then we're going to see a Disrupt Decorum coming in as our Etched Foil, followed by Narsi Fable Singer, a second Mythic. Then we're going to see Magus of the Wheel. Then we get Morphon the Boundless. Uh, this is a Textured Foil. That is two Textured Foils in the same case. Very nice to see that. Fantastic. Pack number one. I knew there was a reason why that one was hard to open. There we get a treasure and an elemental. All righty then. Pack number two. We'll try and skip the knife. Let's see if this one opens up any easier. Look at that. Just had to try it from a different angle. Wow. Two textured foils in the same case. All right. We got ourselves a witching well, followed by a makeshift munitions. Then a Knighted Mirror. There we're going to see an Explorer's Scope, followed by an Efficient Construction, with a Baird Steward of Argive, a Retro Mountain. Then we're going to see a Dark Steel Mutation, followed by a Frantic Search. Then we're going to see a Generous Gift, with a Magus of the Wheel, with an Inferno Titan coming in as our Etched Foil. Then we're going to see ourselves a Regal Sliver, with a Grave Pact coming in in Borderless. Very nice. Haven't seen that before. And then we get Marin of Clan Nell Toth coming in as our profile rare foil in the back. With an Elemental and an Ogre Token. All right, two packs to go. All right, this one kicks off with the Deadly Recluse. Demon's Disciple. Fall from Favor. Sunspear Shikiri, a Hoarding Dragon, uh, Muau, Moau, Loyal Companion. I don't think I've ever said that out loud. And we got a Forest, followed by an All That Glitters in Borderless, Return the Dust, Reliquy Tower in Foil Borderless, followed by Hammer of Nazan. Then we're going to see a Regal Behemoth as our Etched Foil with its Descendant's Fury. And then we're going to see ourselves a training center with a Maelstrom Wanderer coming in. Very nice to see that. Then we get ourselves the Monarch with a Dragon Egg. All right, final Commander Masters pack. And then we'll jump right into the four box analysis. All right, so this one kicks off with a Dread Return, followed by a Wind Riders Wizard, Bonders Ornaments, All That Glitters, Spectral Searchlight. Reliquary Tower with a Retro Island. Then we've got a Path of Ancestry with an Exsanguinate. Then a Dread Return with Miri Weatherlight Duelist coming in as our main set rare. With a Tower Round Sky Summoner, of course, as our etched foil. With a Taunting Sliver, followed by a Fierce Guardianship. Very nice to see that. Great hit for us. And then we're going to see a Pure Steel Paladin coming in at Foil Borderless in the back with a Zombie Cat Token. All right, so give me just a minute. I'll get this one organized, and we'll be right back with the MTG Box Analysis. 
We'll begin the analysis by looking at all of the cards that we pulled from the four Commander Masters Collector Booster Packs, and then we'll review how much of the set we covered, both by non-foil and foil, along with a breakdown of coverage by rarity. Following this, we'll establish a baseline for value by looking at the value of the set before moving into a recap of the actual observed value, again by non-foil and foil. Finally, we'll conclude with a summary. If you want to go deeper into the analysis and see all of the metrics for this box and more than 140 others, simply join the channel at the Give Me the Data level. Using this chart, we can see the non-foils we pulled in green, the foils we pulled in orange, and the set in gray as the baseline. In the non-foil space, we ended up seeing 12 borderless, 4 etched foils, 4 extended art cards, and 1 of the 10 textured foils. In the foil space, we saw a total of 39 cards. 28 of these were in standard frame, 4 were retro frame basic lands, and 7 were borderless. Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, those 12 borderless cards gave us 15% coverage of the category. The 4 etched foils gave us 2% coverage, the 4 extended art cards gave us 1% coverage, and the single textured foil was good enough for 10% coverage. As I mentioned a moment ago, we saw 39 total foils in today's box. This was good enough for 7% coverage of the set. Our highest coverage among the primary colors of Magic was a tie between white and blue, each with 8% coverage. Pivoting the coverage by rarity, in today's box we saw 42% of the commons and 17% of the uncommons in non-foil that we were eligible to see. We also saw 10 of the 195 rares for 5% coverage and 3 non-foil mythics for 4% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 13% of the commons and 6% of the uncommons, along with 6 foil rares for 3% coverage, as well as a single foil mythic good enough for 2% coverage. In total, we saw 16 rares and 4 mythics within these 4 packs. Before getting into the value of today's collector booster box, let's first take a look at the value of the set. This chart shows all 747 cards that you can pull from a Commander Masters collector booster pack using non-foil market prices as of August 14th, 2023. Currently, the set features 90 cards valued over $10, 74 cards valued between $5 and $10, and in the $1 to $5 category, there are currently 161 cards. The other 422 cards in the set are currently valued less than a dollar. Now, if you were to calculate the combined value of all 747 cards using non-foil market prices, the grand total would come up to be $4,172.83. This is about 13% less than the value of the set on August 7th. So what did we end up seeing in today's box? Well, let's dive in starting off with a look at the non-foil space. In today's box, three of the 21 non-foils that we pulled are valued over $10. They were the Grave Pack and Borderless, currently valued at $14.22, and the Fierce Guardianship at $37.46. And then, of course, we were treated to morph on the Boundless in Textured Foil, which unfortunately is the least valuable textured foil at $27.29. We did also see two non-foils valued between $5 and $10, and six non-foils valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 10 non-foils in the box are currently valued less than a dollar. And in the foil space, we took quite the beating, seeing zero cards valued over $10 and only one card valued over $5, which was the Savage Beating valued at $5.13. We did, however, see eight foils valued between $1 and $5. The other 30 foils that we saw are currently valued less than a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box through a Patreon agreement for $185.75. The current market price for these boxes as of August 14th, 2023 is $173.85. The Commander Masters Collector Booster Box contains four packs, each with 15 cards, allowing us to see 60 cards plus tokens. Now, the four tokens that we saw have a current market value of $2.36. The four Retro Frame Basic Lands are currently valued at $1.62. The 24 commons are valued at $6.80, and the 12 uncommons are currently valued at $10.93. The 16 rares that we pulled are valued at $72.68, and the 4 mythics, including our textured Morphon, is currently valued at $54.82. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes up to be $149.21 in card market value, which is a loss of $36.54, and means that I only saw a return of 80% of my purchase price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 14 cards valued over two bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $125.33, which means that those 14 cards represent 84% of the total box value. 
Be sure to come back on Friday when I'll be putting the four collector booster boxes head to head to analyze coverage, duplication, value, and a variety of other metrics. Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people. All by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.